Are you kidding me? What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you take me for? Are you... Uh, oh, oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been gone for vacation for a couple of weeks now, and I, I miss the national political conventions, and so I was going back over some of the recaps, and I'm not sure I'm glad I went over some of those recaps. You know, it's amazing to me how we've devolved into this culture of competition, competing truth claims, competing narratives for, for what's real and what's the truth. It's as if language itself has become a kind of weapon of war. We talk over each other. We talk past each other. And it seems like we're just not listening. You know, in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus encourages his followers to listen. In fact, the passage goes something like, if there's sin among you, go point out the fault and listen. If there's refusal to listen, we'll take two more. If there's still refusal to listen, then tell the community. If there's still refusal to listen, even then, let that one be to you as an outsider, as one to win back. Well, and, and you remember the, the last sentence of the passage. Jesus says, for wherever two or three are gathered in my name, what? There I am. There I am with them. Let's go to church. Welcome. Today you will hear words of justice and injustice. Some hard things about what people can do to each other, especially when we think we are so right, but are wrong. So I'm glad we start here at the font, remembering our baptism into mercy. It's a font of forgiveness, not justice, a place of love and mercy for all. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. O Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful, and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Grant me grace to love all people, every race, and in each person may I see my kindred loved, redeemed by Thee. Break down the wall that would divide Thy children, Lord, on every side. My neighbor's good, let me pursue, let Christian love bind warm and true. Give me thy courage, Lord, to speak, whenever strong oppress the weak. Should I myself the victim be, help me forgive. Remembering Thee. Mm -hmm. 
So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked shall die in their inequity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their inequity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Psalm 119, verses 33 to 40. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teaching. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which is for those who fear him. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. By your righteousness, enliven me. A reading from Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves one another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. reading from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, then tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Brothers, let us come together, walking in the Spirit. There's much to be done We will come reaching Out from our comforts And they will know us by our love Sisters, we were made for kindness We can pierce the darkness As he shines
Stand firm in the truth now. Set your hearts above. You will be reaching long after we're gone. They will know you by your love. The time is now. Come church us. Let me introduce you to Elbert Parr Tuttle. He's a proud American, born in 1897, and he served in World War I. He saw combat and was awarded the Legion of Merit, a Purple Heart, and even a Bronze Star. Tuttle retired as the Chief Justice of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. But as a younger man, he served in the National Guard and was in Georgia in 1938. Orders came for Tuttle and his unit to put down a riot to quell a a violent mob who was forming, forming to uh, lynch a black man who had been accused of raping a white woman. They managed to keep him safe. But as the man stood trial in what was widely regarded as a miscarriage of justice, um, he saw the, the hearing last two hours. The jury deliberated all of six minutes, and 12 white men found him guilty and sentenced him to death. Tuttle was incredulous, but it was a defining moment for him. He went on to become an attorney and then a judge, where he heard cases, heard cases and listened carefully to evidence and accounts of those who have been harmed by bias and by bigotry. He presided over important civil rights cases in the 1950s and the 1960s. How did Jesus put it? Binding and loosing. (laughs) He was there for listening and for judging. Hard choices and big changes. Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Audrey West likes to say, wherever two or three are gathered, there's going to be trouble. (laughs) And you know that's true. You know that's how it works. Because as the volume goes up, the capacity to pay attention to the facts goes down. As self-righteous indignation goes up, our ability to pay attention to our neighbors goes down. As the perception of, of threat goes up, the ability for creativity and for compassion and for curiosity goes down. Matthew 18. You know, in some Christian communities, this is a passage that gets used as a kind of a a model, a a template for conflict resolution. There's this sense that if you go through those those steps that are defined there, then you'll you'll come out with some closure at the end, some some restitution at the end. You'll be able to decide who's who's in and who's out, who's right and who's wrong. Is that good enough? Is that how it works? This is Dr. Audrey West. She's a faithful scholar. She's devoted her academic life and indeed her personal life to the study of the New Testament. And she encourages us in this passage to look at its context. Because you'll remember that just a few verses earlier, Jesus is commending the children, the least ones, the little ones, those without power, those without status or agency. 
for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. So what's the context? Well, isn't it Jesus' warning about taking advantage? Isn't it Jesus' um, encouragement for us to um, not put ourselves up over against someone else? You know, this gets kind of personal because I'm white. I own property. I have an education. I have a dentist and a pension. And I have a credit score that's somewhere north of 800, thank you very much. But I've never, ever in my life had to worry about my next meal. I've never, ever had to worry about being mistaken for a criminal. I started my life on the shoulders of generations who came before me. Their work, their sacrifice, their accomplishments, not of my own merit or, or doing, I live in that kind of privilege, with that kind of advantage. And I forget that sometimes. So look at this word. This is from ancient Koine Greek. It's in the New Testament. It's in Matthew's Gospel. And Jesus uses this verb four times, just in the span of three short verses. It's akuo, is how it's pronounced. When translated, it's listen. Four times. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. At its core, it is an impulse toward advocacy, toward uh, attention and protection of those who are marginalized, those who are, are left out, those who are blamed. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, <laughs> yep, there's going to be a fight. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Jesus' own presence in the church as it recommits himself to nurturing honest dialogue. Jesus himself present as the church devotes itself to, um, to not keeping silent in the face of behavior that harms others. There I am in the midst of them. Jesus present as the church again, walks with those who have less. So we watch for those signs. We, we listen for those things. We might just find Jesus there. Amen.
Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Bless the work of churches in this community. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, teach us to care for your creation. Renew places suffering from flood and storms, fire and drought especially hurricane-ravaged areas in the Gulf Coast and Caribbean and fire-threatened California. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Turn nations and leaders toward peace and cooperation. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police to protect the well-being of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely. Comfort those who mourn, especially Sharon on the death of her sister Joyce and Ed on the death of his wife Betty. Shelter all who are vulnerable, especially those in need of healing. Holly, Harper, Elizabeth, Tyler James, Joy, Bill, Debbie, Judy, Larry and Larry, Heidi, James, Greg, Bev, and Wayne. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, hear the joy of those celebrating new life. Lloyd and Joy on the birth of their great granddaughter Penelope, and Bill and Sarah on the birth of great grandson Phoenix. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. This Labor Day weekend, we ask your protection on all those who work and serve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All these things, and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Please be with you. Quinton. Peace be with you. Peace with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. It's time for some announcements. You know, we're uh, so thankful for the lighting project. I think in cash donations so far, there's $150,000 and promises of more to come. That means we can start. That means the contractors can get to work. We're glad for that. Many in our congregation are helping out our hungry neighbors. If you haven't clicked on the link there in the church newsletter or on the website, uh, you might think about that. It, it matters, and these are important days to help those who, who need it, who need the help. Do you know this guy? He's pretty amazing. Weldon Sorgen turns 90 years old, and there's a way you can offer your affirmation, your gratitude, your celebration of this milestone in his life. There's also um, a special meeting of the congregation coming up on Wednesday night, September the 9th. That'll be at 7 p.m. It's going to be on Zoom, but there's also a way to do that with a conference call. Listen, we want to make sure everybody has access to that meeting. So if you're having any trouble, any trouble at all, we've got ways to include you in that because we're deliberating a, a, a resolution to call Deborah Squires as associate pastor of the congregation. That's a big deal. You've got your ballot already, but the ballot only works if you're able to participate in the meeting. So that's a big deal. All right, you know about Salmon Sunday. That's a long tradition in our congregation. You also know that we can't do it like we usually do, so it will be one like you've never experienced before. The idea is that we'll have a drive through stay-in-your-car event on Sunday, September the 13th, between 10 and noon. 
If you want to bring a donation of canned food drive or bring a donation of school supplies for kids in need, do that. But we'll have salmon and hot dogs, things to share on that special day. So make your plan to come. All right, there's a, a class coming up for adults in the fall in September, Racism in America. Reverend Ariana Shekdell and Reverend Rick Rouse are leading that, facilitating that series of, of meetings online. But we'll also have a guest presenter, and, and this is Lanisha. Hello, I'm Lanisha DeBartalabin, Executive Director of the Northwest African American Museum and Chair of the Board of the New Hope Community Development Institute in Seattle's historic Central District. The belated representative John Lewis would always say, we may not have chosen the times, but the times have chosen us. That is the eminent question of this moment in history. What are you doing with the time at hand? The work ahead is heavy, but essential. Let's build the world we wish to see together. That is what you are engaged in. As Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would say, none of us are free until we are all free. Let's do the work to get free together. Thank you. Thanks, Lanisha. All right. Uh, Hurricane Laura has ravaged households in, uh, uh, in, in part of our country, and Lutheran disaster response is there on scene. It might make a contribution to them. Preschool and family and friends is coming in the fall. Yes, it will have all kinds of new precautions and, uh, and, and ways for us to rally around those families to keep everyone safe. Keep that in your prayers, and, uh, and, and thanks. Thanks for your generosity, for the ways you have been so supportive with prayers, so supportive with your financial contributions. It all sustains our ministry together. So thanks. guide uphold you with the shepherd's care and fold you God be with you till we meet again till we meet till we meet till we meet at Jesus And now the benediction. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
bless you, and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace, remember the poor.